Well, retirement planning for baby boomers, and there are a lot of them who are starting to enter this market of uh, retirement, it's going to be much different than the previous generation and what they had to plan for. But what are the biggest differences that are facing these retirees today? And what do you take into account to plan a strategy to deal with that for new retirees? The biggest challenge, uh, I think, this generation versus uh, two generations maybe ago or a parent's generation is that life expectancy is, is much longer. Uh, when the original three-legged stool came out, which was Social Security, uh, pensions, and personal savings, uh, they only expected to live five or six years in retirement. So you don't need nearly as much money. You don't need to, to save as much in order to get through a retirement that's only going to last maybe five to ten years. Where today, uh, a healthy couple, 65, has got uh, 30 years, maybe even longer, because life expectancy continues to increase as medical technology continues to extend our lives. And not only are we living longer, but in many cases, we're living longer and dealing with chronic diseases that we didn't, uh, that, that would have killed us uh, a generation or two ago. So the baby boomers uh, probably didn't expect this, uh, thought that just saving, that uh, Social Security, pensions, uh, personal savings, put some money away was going to be enough to take them through retirement, and that's just not the case. Uh, so a lot of them, and I think the last statistics that I saw was something like 70% of the baby boomers turning 65 today are expecting to continue to work. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, doing something part-time or supplementing your income. Uh, there's a lot to be said about keeping your mind sharp and, and keeping your hands uh, in something. But being required to do it, I think to some extent that's failing retirement. I would like to be able to get to 65 and have my clients get to age 65 or whatever their retirement age is and not have to work. And then if they choose to work, then then they choose to because they want to, but not because they have to. And so starting early is uh, the key, if we can save a little bit. And how, starting early, at <laughs> what age really should you start your retirement planning? Well, I think financial planning begins from the first dollar that you make. So parents should be teaching their children to never spend everything that they make. So if they make $10 cutting somebody's lawn, they should be told and forced to save 10%. So that that habit, by the time that they get out on their own and start earning a paycheck, they know already that I need to save 10%. So the 10% goes into savings, and then savings goes into investments, and by the time we're at 50 or 55, we've got a decent nest egg that even if we don't have enough money to retire completely, maybe I can go into something that I really wanted to do, but it wasn't as financially rewarding, and enjoy my life much longer. But even if you're 50 or 60, you would say you still have time to be planning your retirement, and this is when you should be meeting with someone like <laughs> Rick Rogers to, to figure out how you can maximize those years you have left productively in the workforce to get into right. a financially it's, secure yeah, future. It's, it's never too late, uh, but we probably lost a lot of our options at that point. And probably more of, if, if you haven't really saved much and you're at 50 or 55, a lot more of the discussion is going to be about controlling spending that, uh, okay, we're not going to be able to replace 100% of your income in 10 years. Uh, there's just not enough time to do that if you haven't done anything already. So you're going to be retiring with 80% or 70%, and what can we get that number down to that allows you to enjoy life and do some of the things uh, with, uh, without having to work another 20 years?